what is up guys thanks for tuning in to part two of the rooftop tent build now we're pretty much going to uh, start right where we left off with the sanding of the body uh, and today we're going to be applying more of this filler and um, we're also going to be coating it with some oil based sealer so this is what I got to seal it it's just some kills original it's interior and exterior primer you guys can pretty much read that it's an all-weather sealer so what it's going to do is seal up all this wood and uh, make it so we can put a base coat on it and for a base coat I got some hunter green rust-oleum which is also oil based um, oil does a lot better at protecting the wood and everything a lot of people would use like epoxy resin but that's like 150 bucks for a gallon of it or something and but uh, yeah so we got some hunter green that should match my car pretty well and uh, we'll probably get it sealed up today I also weighed this thing um, the top and the bottom and it came out to a little heavier than I'd like it to be. It came out to 95 pounds, so the top weighed around 41 pounds and the bottom weighed 54 pounds. So 95 pounds is pretty heavy, but I think I'll be able to keep it under like 130, like all in with the canvas, the mattress, the hinge, the latches, all that type of stuff. I think that'll keep it under uh, 130, which is fine. That's pretty comparable to some other tents and uh, that will keep my roof uh, to around 200 pounds. So pretty much what I'm going to do now is set this whole thing up uh, for paint. So I'm going to fill in some more little holes. I missed this screw hole yesterday. And uh, all the side ones I'll get. And I'm going to fill in under this 2x4 uh, where it goes to the plywood. Since 2x4s are kind of rounded, there's a little bit of a gap here. Um, so I'm just going to fill that with the fix-all and sand it down flat. And then the top and the bottom will be ready for getting sealed and getting painted. All right, so basically what fix all is, it's kind of like a, it's just like a powder, really fine powder, and all you do is add water to it. It doesn't take much water either. And uh, you mix it up, I have this little putty knife, you just mix it up and it, it hardens very fast. So you kind of have to work um, pretty quickly. So it's a little hard to film because I got to mix it and then I gotta go around the whole, um, the whole tent and fill stuff in so you might not be able to see me. But I'll show you guys once I'm done. I'm just like filling in uh, little divots and stuff. So um, I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a little divot over there. Some cracks kind of, like just a um, veneer crack kind of thing. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna fill in this area. But yeah, I'm just gonna go around with the putty knife and the fix all. It kind of turns into a putty, almost like a, uh, a kind of thin or thick bondo depending on how much water you put in it and yeah it dries very fast so it'll it'll dry in five minutes and be solid so I gotta work real fast okay I'm gonna try and show you guys how I do it so you can see there's only I mean there's only this much water in there and I'm just gonna put some in here and in the hot sun like this it's gonna dry super fast so it really doesn't take much water so look at I barely poured any in there I don't know if you guys can see a very small amount of water and I mix it in so it turns into this kind of this kind of putty stuff. So I'm gonna go around the tent and uh, fill stuff in right now. have most of the body work done on the uh, outside of the tent so pretty much the inside all I gotta do is sand off these kind of runs I had with the glue so this is the top piece and uh, the bottom piece is pretty much done you can see how I filled in the cracks here uh, from the 2x4 to the plywood so it just looks like it's nice one piece almost all the way especially once it's painted you won't even be able to tell hopefully 
Um, I have some of this Elmer's glue. This, uh, this works on wood actually really well. So I'm just going to use this, go around um, mostly on the other piece. Uh, but there's some like holes and stuff in here that need to be filled. So I'm just going to use this with some sawdust and kind of just let it go in those holes. Make sure everything is nice and uh, tight. And I think tomorrow I'm going to seal this thing up and paint it. I'm probably going to spray it though. Um, so I'm just going to thin out the Rust-Oleum green paint and spray it out of an air gun. All right, so I got pretty much everything sanded down and filled. You can see like this kind of stuff right here. It's like a full knot that I filled and uh, it came out pretty nice. So I'm pretty much done with all the sanding. I don't care if it's not perfect. Uh, I don't want to sand anymore. So I'm gonna start getting a coat of oil-based sealer on there and uh, probably end up doing three coats or so of it just to make sure it's all waterproof. Alright, so both of these uh, have about three coats of that on there. It used about three quarters of a gallon to do three coats on the top side only. I have some other uh, type of that kills sealer stuff that I can put on the inside. The inside's not as uh, important as the outside, so I want to get a lot of coats on the outside, a lot of thick coats. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Of course, you can still tell it's wood. so. It is what it is, but um, it looks pretty pretty uniform and uh, and pretty nice. So I'm happy with that. I'll let it dry for an hour, and then I'll get the spray gun out, and we'll start spraying it with the base coat. Okay, I let it dry for around two hours, and now I'm going to start sanding it. Just do a, a nice uh, layer of sanding just the to get the ripples out of it it's still gonna have some ripples but at least it won't be real uneven so just a quick one 400 grit on both of them and then I'll be ready to paint it and I've been cutting out uh, like 90% of the sanding because this whole project is basically 90% sanding uh, at least with the base part so if I kept it all in there it would be like a 30 minute long video of me just sanding so got it all just sand it down so it's smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean it up and then we'll be ready to spray. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start spraying with my green paint, my base coat. You guys probably aren't gonna see the whole painting process because I don't want some over, I don't want any overspray on the camera. So you'll see a little bit of it. Got it all sprayed on, used pretty much the entire court, and it's still not all the way uh, covered. Now, this isn't really the color I was looking for. This green, it kind of looks like a toy, or kind of, I don't know, it's a little weird, like a, like a little uh, army man guy. But um, I think I'm just going to treat this coat as like another coat of primer, and then I'm going to roll on some bed liner. All right, I just picked up some truck bed coating or truck bed liner, whatever you want to call it, at Harbor Freight. Let's grab it. It's a mess in here. This thing's kind of been used as a uh, as a work truck. So, yeah, it's called Iron Armor truck bed coating. It's like 50 bucks by the 20% off, so uh, 40 bucks and whole gallon of it. It's cheaper than I think it's cheaper than Rust-Oleum and stuff. The Home Depot I went to didn't have any. So I just went on to Harbor Freight and grabbed some of this. And uh, that's what I'm going to coat the outside of the tent with. If you guys have seen my other videos, you knew that this thing was a white 
before and I just painted it a couple days ago. I've never never spray painted anything with like an air compressor and a spray gun and stuff, but it turned out freaking awesome. So this dark gray color all the way did everything. It looks awesome. We kept the top white just because I thought it added good uh, contrast, especially for keeping the seals and stuff around the doors or the windows white. So yeah, it looks pretty great. All right, well, I'm gonna start rolling this stuff on, but first I have to shake the can vigorously for two full minutes. And then uh, I'm just gonna apply it with this regular roller. It didn't say to not do that, so we'll see. This stuff's pretty much all the way sealed. I just wiped it off and I'm just gonna start rolling it on. Hopefully it goes on pretty smoothly and uh, hopefully I got enough. Got the first layer of bed liner on this thing, and uh, it actually went on really well. Every once in a while, you can see little spots of green, but that second coat will be perfect on it. But yeah, I like it a lot better than the green I had it. It went on really nice, it looks pretty good. Just gotta wait an hour for it to uh, dry before I can do the next coat. I like this stuff, it's I mean, it goes on perfect, it's not super rough or textured. But um, it's plenty for what I need. It's not, I don't really need the texture so much as just the way it looks. Just got the second coat on. I think this is all I'm gonna do. Just two coats because it's already very well waterproofed. This is more of just uh, for looks. So I think I'm just gonna stick with two coats. You can't see uh, any of the green underneath. So that's good. Um, covered really well. Uh, I really like that stuff doesn't dry super fast takes a couple hours to dry so yeah it's got a super strong smell to it too so I recommend that you 100% wear a little respirator kind of thing which is what I was wearing because it's just it's really bad got my plastic hinge in the mail comes in a, this is a five foot roll so this stuff's kind of cool because it's it's very waterproof it doesn't have any holes in it like a regular piano hinge or any other hinge so um, and this is the part that gets all the rain water and everything coming off the windshield. So I'm going to cut it down to a 48 inch section to fit the rooftop tent. And I'm going to put it on a piece of 2x4 and screw it in and get my lengths or my uh, screw spacing all perfect. And I picked up these uh, stainless, they're actually for sheet metal but I think it'll work fine in the wood for holding the hinge. I got two packs of it, so 50 of them. I think if I spread them out along the hinge, it'll be perfect. So the way I did this is I drilled two holes that are kind of staggered and in kind of the spot I wanted them. And I measured down from this one, it's a half inch from the top, and then I got to measure down from this one and create a line all the way down like I did here. And mark every four inches for the top one, every four inches for the bottom one. So they kind of stagger all the way down. So I got the box all put together and I got it spaced out probably a quarter inch from uh, the bottom to the top to give room for the for the hinge and for everything to, to operate so I hope it's enough if not um, I'll have to fix it but I think it'll be alright we'll see how this hinge works alright I got the first screw in on the top now pretty much what I'm going to do is try and level this out to uh, keep it in the same spot and then I'm just going to work my way down from here all the way down. That way it stays nice and tight and uh, doesn't move at all. Got 
the living hinge mounted on here. Used about 48 screws, I believe. It's kind of a pain to put on because you got to measure it like as you go. So it took a while. But uh, let's go ahead and try it out. All right, let's see how it works. And for the first time, the top and the bottom are connected to each other via this plastic hinge. Yeah. And you can see the angle of this. This is a very narrow range of motion. So I don't think it puts much stress on the hinge ever. Of course, I don't have my uh, any the uh, gas struts or anything on there, which is going to be the biggest test for this. But uh, you see, it's a little, it's a little wavy, just a little bit on the end here too. But no big deal. I'm gonna put some silicone in on the hinge just to seal it up a little better. And then um, I gotta cut this off to the right length. But yeah, it looks pretty good. That's about how high it'll open. It's been a little while since I've worked on the tent. So I'll just kind of catch you guys up with what I've been doing. It's been kind of crappy weather, so I haven't been able to work on it as much. But what I did do is I painted the inside of it. I sealed it with the Kills Primer, and then I put, um, this is like masonry paint, which you can, you can put on wood, it's fine. And uh, it's kind of an off-white, grayish color in person. So it looks pretty good. Uh, I actually just went around and painted these lips. I was kind of debating painting them uh, with the bed liner or just with the um, grayish paint. But I think it looks better with the bed liner. And I'll probably end up putting this seal on the top piece. Uh, not quite sure yet. If it sticks to this stuff, I'll probably put it on the bottom. But what that we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, yeah, so I just kind of went around with the bed liner again. Touched up some spots. It all looks pretty good. Uh, I did the same on the front one or on the top one over here. Went all around the sides just because when I was painting this uh, lip and stuff, it kind of got over on the bed liner. So I just went over another another time with bed liner to kind of clean up that line. And I actually got these in the mail yesterday. So these are my struts that I got. They are 36 inches long, and I believe they're yeah they're 80 pound. 80 pound struts so I weighed the top like how you're supposed to I even have that little beam in the middle the support going across the middle so I was able to weigh uh, with the hinge and everything I was able to weigh the middle of it and it was around 40 pounds right in the middle so I went ahead and um, did the little formula so you just basically double that and add 20 pounds so I just doubled it and I figure 80 pound ones will be perfect but uh I'm a little worried about the plastic hinge on the back when it's closed if it's going to um, if it's going to bend it at all or whatever it's going to do. I'm going to go ahead and let all of this dry and then I'll put the hinge back on and everything. All right, so I pretty much just went around all the corners uh, and the joints and stuff and just put some regular old caulking on it on the bottom. This is the bottom. You probably won't see the bottom like at all because the because the bed but um, I did the top too just all the seams just to kind of make it look all right and uh, I feel that it might help with uh, condensation and stuff if it does get wet I still think the joints are probably the most vulnerable part uh, probably the least amount of paint on the corners maybe I don't know but uh, I just kind of like the uniform look I didn't do a perfect job on it or anything but no big deal I just used the here I have it right here dries in 20 minutes You're supposed to paint over it but I didn't I'm also going to use some of this black caulking for the hinge part so I'm just gonna go do a, a bead along this edge all the way down and then we'll be able to screw it on just just as another layer of uh, sealing it so go ahead and do that before I put the top on and get it all screwed in I put the seal little weather seal on there it's just uh, you can kind of see the side profile here of it yeah so I put the seal on there 
just because I wouldn't be able to put it on if I put the top on already. And it went on really nice. I decided to put it on the top just because the top actually had, has paint instead of the bed liner right there. So it sticks, sticks a lot better on the top. And I mean, I don't think it makes much of a difference whether it's got the seal on the top or the bottom, but uh, I think it looks pretty good. It's, it's pretty strong on there too. I had to use a couple different pieces, so I had to cut it at the corners because it wouldn't make that turn. Yeah, stuff is like, it was like 12 bucks for 30 feet of it and I only need 22 feet or something. Look how perfectly this closes. Okay, so I'm mounting the uh, gas struts, the mounts at least. I mounted this gas strut already. Um, I didn't film much of it just because it's kind of boring, you know. I do f film a lot of boring things, but this one I didn't feel like filming. So I got this one mounted and it seems to work pretty good. I get about an inch of uh, stick out once it's closed, which is fine. That way it's not, it's not exposed to the elements as much, you know. But um, yeah, so this ended up being about 30 and 5 eighths to this one uh, from the front, 30 and 5 eighths inches. And then from this back piece, I measured 33 inches over and centered them. So I'm just kind of replicating that on the other side. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what I'm doing. All right, let's try and close it. I got it all mounted up. Definitely tell that they put a lot of stress on the back there, so not too bad. I think I'll have to uh, remedy whatever's going on in the back there because it is pushing it pretty hard. So uh, when it's closed, that is, I'll see what I can do. All right, now I'm going to add these uh, clasps to it. Um, they're pretty small but I have four of them, so I'm just gonna mount all four of them. That way it'll hold it in the right spot when it's closed, and it shouldn't put too much stress on the hinge or anything. But uh, these are each rated for 220 pounds, so honestly I could probably just use one of them if I wanted to, but I'm gonna use all four. Uh, two on the front and two on the sides, I think. All right, so I got all the clasps on there, four of them, two in the front, two on the sides. And uh, you can still see a little bit that it is pushing it out this way just a little bit you can really I mean you can see it more at the back how it's pushing it because I mean that's 160 pounds of force pushing it uh, that way so I don't know how I'm gonna do this I might cut out little sections of this uh, hinge and put in uh, just like your traditional traditional kind of hinge maybe a couple of heavy-duty stainless door hinges or something like that but it's not super bad right now. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, that was my only, that was my worry with the, with the plastic hinge, but I'll get that sorted. And for right now, it opens and closes. So I'll show you guys how I do it. All right, so this is, just walk around, undo side. right up these clamps hold it down really nice uh, pushes the seal down around the whole thing so that's awesome and uh, closes good too it's not too hard Do these guys and closed and uh, it looks pretty good actually I think I fixed um, what was going on before I just put shims because I had the lip going around this whole thing so I put a shim in between the lip and this upper upper piece here so probably I don't know quarter inch of shims or maybe eighth inch of shims and it works perfect now this thing isn't even it's not stressing at all so I'll just make a full full length strip of that and uh, glue it in or screw it and should be good to go all right guys thanks for watching part two of the tent build 
Next part is just going to be me sewing. Probably won't include too much of the sewing since I really don't know what I'm doing. But probably the next part, it's going to be just about finished and ready to go on the car. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends or something. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean up this giant mess that I've made over the past week or so. And just so you guys know, I pretty much upload these videos the day after I uh, film them. So this is really going kind of slow for me. But um, just waiting on shipping and stuff. The sewing might take a while, so just uh, bear with me there. Um, I'll try and give you guys some tips and everything once I'm already done. But yeah, so thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.